tonight is going to be a step away from ceramics, but still doing something creative and hopefully fun. Um, I'm going to kind of go ahead and get started and I'm going to list the, the supplies, kind of show them. Um, sometimes when I'm typing, like my post that I, I put up, I think Wednesday night, uh, when I tried to explain, make sure you had four on a page if you wanted to color along. Sometimes I'm not sure if my words translate when you're actually trying to do something. So, let me get... Okay, so this is what I meant when you um, print it out by a 3 by 5 You can get four of them onto a page. Um... So that's, that's what I meant when I typed that. And these are the pictures that I attached to that post, I believe, on Wednesday. Um, and this is what we're going to be working on. Um, so I have this one. I have this one. And I couldn't actually find the original lemon pitchers that I used on this one um, so I found a different one that was pretty similar and I have that one printed out in fours as well I can't show you this one because I kind of started on it <laughs> but this is what we're going to be making I don't know if we'll get through this in, in one go or not because the coloring does take some time um, and you know, cause we are going to be doing shading and please don't get afraid when I say we're going to be doing shading. It's a real easy way. And, um, so it is, you know, you're going to be coloring. That's, 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 that's it. So you don't have to be afraid. Um, make sure you guys are commenting that you're here in the room so that we know who is here because this is going to be our giveaway episode <laughs> i guess that's what we'll call it our giveaway episode um so make sure you're commenting that you're here so we know that you're here and we know that you're watching um because towards the end of this is when i will announce the winner and the winner will be from the people that are in the room um that way um it's just a little bit more interactive. We can get you to message us right away and uh, let you know what you want. Of course, I'll tell you a little bit more about that later on. So, okay. I, I had said that you're going to need a glass cutting board. I got mine from the Dollar Tree. And I, I haven't even taken off the plastic off of this one. Um, so you need a glass cutting board. You're going to need... A pair of scissors eventually you're going to need your colored pencils you're going to need your pictures you don't necessarily you won't necessarily need all four of these but if you have four it's a little bit more um, oh, efficient to, to cut to use up the whole page um, if you make a mistake you if you feel like you've made a mistake, you've got another one to start with right away. Um, but this particular one actually took one of the first strawberry pictures. Okay. So there's one of these on there. There is one set of these where it's the three strawberries. And that's these three strawberries right down here. But if you see, let's see if I can get these on here. If you see, they're arranged differently. So there's some cutting that we're going to be doing. Um, and then the lemons were actually like three or four different pieces of the, the printout. Um, so I actually needed all four that I had printed out to get all this look. But we can get that with the other print that I added on. Sorry, had a message come across. Um, oop, and of course, now I've got the camera all. Okay, so 
we're after we color the lemon pitchers and the, the, the three strawberry pitcher is going to be cut out more so that you can arrange them differently. Um, if you're not doing the strawberries and lemons, because your kitchen's not strawberry and lemon, completely understand, you'll be able to take some of the stuff that I'm talking about and convert it into the pictures that you did pick. Okay, and, oh yeah, and Mod Podge. I talked about the Mod Podge a um, couple videos ago, and I showed the uh, cutting board a couple videos ago. This is Mod Podge dishwasher safe. That does not mean it's food safe. Just because it's dishwasher safe does not mean it's food safe. Um, so when we get to apply the, the dishwasher safe Mod Podge, it goes on the pitcher and everything goes on the back. Okay, so that will make it food safe because the food will never actually come in contact with what we're doing. Okay, but the Mod Podge isn't going to be needed until towards the end. You'll need um, a paintbrush to be able to apply. I don't know if we're going to get to the applying part tonight because, um, like I've said, I try to keep this between a half hour to an hour because I don't want people losing interest and for me to just sit there and drone on and on. All right, then uh, the colored pencils that I said I used in this one were um, the 50 count Crayola uh, colored pencils. I like the 50 count because you get your widest variety of colors and you don't have to really try to make up a color because um, you can blend your colors but you can't mix your colors when you're dealing with colored pencils. Um, so what I do is I pick out the colors that I think I'm going to use. I try to get three <laughs> I try to get three reds, three greens, because you three different shades of red. Let me, um, you've got your darkest, a medium, and then a bright is what I try to pick out. So a dark, medium, and bright on the three color, on your red and your green. Also kind of the same principle with the lemons, um, but with the lemons, I've also added uh, my dark, my medium, and my bright. And then I've also added a darker um, to kind of get with the like the seeds and stuff. And then when I looked up a picture of a real lemon, the inside around the rind is kind of a, a white fleshy color. So I also got white and flesh. And of course, you can't color pencil without black. So what I do when I'm getting ready to use my colors, I pick out my three that I think will look good together. So I've got my, you might need a, a pencil sharpener too. Let me, sorry, okay. Um, when you pick out your three colors, you, you want to kind of color in a little spot on your paper to make sure that you like the colors together to make sure they do kind of go from uh, dark to medium to bright and I have ruby red red and fiery fuchsia are the three colors oh and fiery fuchsia I just realized is a crazy art um, colored pencil. I have I have a container full of colored pencils and there is Crayola and crazy art mixed up in here so it doesn't really matter what brand. Of course do I have the expensive Prismacolor colored pencils? Yes, of course I do because I'm a crazy craft person. Okay, so I will take my ruby red and I'll do just a little color right here. And I'm sorry, but I'm gonna have to turn on my other lights because I have the light behind me and I'm having a hard time seeing 
my colors real quick because I need to make sure I have my um, reds in the right direction. Okay, so now I have my reds. I did my ruby red first, then my red, and then my hot pink, the fuchsia. Um, and I think I'm going to need to have the ruby red be my dark. Where is it, the red? Yeah, the red's my dark, then the ruby red, and then the hot pink. So I'll turn that light back off so it doesn't cause a, a glare for you guys. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your darkest one and you're going to outline your strawberries. And don't worry about if you're, you know, coming into the strawberry a little bit, you're going to want to come into the strawberry just a little bit because that will help. My TV's flashing at me. Something to remember when you are coloring and you're shading Things in the background on the back are going to be supposed to be darker than the things towards the front. That helps give a, an illusion of being rounded. So that's why you're doing your darkest colors first and kind of um, outlining. Okay. And then like under a leaf is going to be a little bit darker than out here in the middle. Something else, I always forget this, and I even told myself, don't forget this, make sure you do it first. You have white, you're working on a white paper. Yes, you do need to color your white. The reason why, and I'm going to be doing these flowers, there's little flowers in the picture. The reason why you do white is because it's just kind of solidifies the paper in that area and kind of helps the texture match the rest of the texture. Then the other thing is, is when you are coloring, if you accidentally go closer to the petal than you meant to, your color doesn't necessarily stay on the petal and you can keep a white flower. So you'll go through and you'll color your flower. Okay, I'm not gonna do that all because I cheated and um, <clears throat> I have some pre-done steps on the pictures. But you'll do the same thing with your greens. For the greens, I picked pine green, green, and I don't know, I can't read it. Oh, it's a very bright green. <laughs> I need glasses to read it, it's so small. Yeah, anyway. But these are all the Crayola one, or yeah, Crayola. These are all Crayola. So with your leaves, you'll take your absolute darkest one. I'm gonna kinda just go here. There's pine, and then green. There's not a big difference between the pine and the green. And then the, the bright green. Okay, so you'll take your pine green and you'll do some nice thick tracing of the lines. Get kind of thick. And 
And don't worry about if you're if you're being all nice and pristine on that line. Because this will actually get your leaf to have some uh Wow, I'm having a hard time with words today, guys. But uh, depth, that's the word I'm looking for. And um, so you'll just go and outline everything with your greens, your reds, your white. In the middle of your flower, you can take one of the yellows because a strawberry flower has white petals and a yellow center. If you look that up on the internet, you'll see that. So you'll go through until you have everything outlined. Okay? With your green, with your darkest green and your darkest red for the strawberry. And then the leaves, I went ahead and just colored them in with the darkest green. Um, I'll show you some things on the leaves, the, the little, the little uh, strawberry topper leaves. Um, I'll show you some stuff towards the end on that one. Okay, so once you have that done, here's the weird part. You start with your darkest, then you're going to go to your lightest color. So on the leaves... asking color or outline um wow I'm not seeing any messages coming through on the video uh, let me see if I can get into it on the computer so okay first you're gonna you're gonna outline all of this is outlining and you can bring it in some more on the dark if you want but really you're just going to outline everything with your darkest colors and do your flowers if you're if you're doing a strawberry anything that's going to be white go ahead and do your white first and you're going to color all of the actual white not outline you're going to color your white okay And um, let me see if I can get into, try it again over here. That's so weird. I can't see anybody's comments on my phone, but I can see them over on the, the computer. Also, Jenny is here, guys, so say hi to her. She's the other half of Magical Mud. Um, she's kind of keeping an eye on the comments, so hopefully she can help me. <laughs> so we have San Mateo, California. We have New York. We have lots of people saying hello. That's awesome. Hello, everybody. Okay, so outline first. Color your flowers if you are working along with me. Um, I'm going to kind of move a little fast probably for you to actually do it right along um, because I worked ahead and got stuff ready for tonight. Um, but you will be able to pause, you know, when, when this is over, you'll be able to replay this video and pause it until you're ready to move on. So you're outlining everything except for the flowers. You're going to go ahead and color them in white. Okay. So now this part is where you're going to color and you're going to take your two lightest colors. So your lightest green and your lightest red slash pink, and uh, you're going to cut actually color in everything now so on the leaves you're going to take your bright green and color it in and you're going to do that for everything okay so that's what I did with the green. 
I'm going to take my pink and I'm going to do the same thing with the strawberries. And then on this particular picture, there are three little tiny strawberries over here. And those strawberries, when, when you see strawberries that aren't ripe, they're kind of a lime green, but I didn't like that. <laughs> so I took some artistic uh, license and I go ahead and I color those the hot pink color because I feel like that's still like not completely ripe of a color yet. Ah, I broke my tip. That's okay. That's why I have a pencil sharpener. Sorry if that is noisy, guys. Um, so the downside to using a inexpensive colored pencil is a lot of times the lead will break. Uh, Crayola, I don't have as much of a problem with lead breaking as I do with Crazy Art. Um, and of course, Prismacolors, their leads typically don't break, but if you drop them onto a hard surface, the, the lead can break inside the wood. Um, so that's the downfall to them, is their, their lead is a little bit softer when it's inside the wood. It's hard to, to explain, um, but it doesn't break when you're when you're coloring with it, and you don't have to press as hard when you're using a, a, a higher quality colored pencil. So you know the, the saying that you get what you pay for is is true. Um, you just kind of have to adjust how you use your items. So you're gonna do all of the strawberries. And if you're, let's say you're doing apples, you can do the same, same thing. You will, same principle as far as outlining in your darkest color and then coloring in with a light color. And then you're gonna go back with a medium color to kind of help give that round effect. Okay, so here's where we're actually doing our coloring, and if you see, it's kind of kind of easier to see on this one where I've gotten a little bit thicker. You already can kind of see that the strawberry is looking a little round. Okay, so that's what you'll do in this step. You will color in everything with your light green and your your light or bright pink, bright green. And also, I think the cool thing of doing it this way is if you guys need me to go back and show something again, I have the other steps that I can go back and redo if I, if you guys need to see something. So here is the one where I originally colored it all the way to this point the other night, and here's my little test slotch, spl splotches that I did to pick my colors. Um, so yeah, and these these splotches here, it's a little hard to see, there we go. Those splotches there were my, my deciding on my yellows. So when you get to this point, you're gonna take your medium color and you're gonna give some shape to this. Again, remember when I said something that's farther back is going to be a little darker so you're going to bring some color up from the edges give it kind of a more strawberry color or if you were doing apples, you would be giving it more of an apple-y color. So see how you now have the illusion that it looks a little bit more rounded? You have your brightest part more towards the front, um, closer to you. And then as it goes further away and more rounded, you get more dark. Um, 
Now, something I'm going to do on this strawberry back here is I'm going to add some more dark into this area because I want it to look like it's behind this strawberry. So I've got my, my, my red again, and I'm going to go in and make this area just a little bit darker because I want it to look like it's behind that front strawberry. And then because this strawberry is behind that other strawberry, there's gonna be less of that bright pink showing. And see what I meant about how you can, you can blend your colors but you can't really mix your color. So now that strawberry looks a little bit more like it's behind this front strawberry, okay? And then to get it to look a little bit more behind, now I'm gonna take my black and I'm just going to lightly, 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 Put just a little bit of black back behind that line. And then I'm going to go under the leaf with the black. So that that leaf now looks like it's out above that strawberry. All right. There we go. I'm trying to make sure that there's no glare so you guys can see what I did. So now that one strawberry, this one here, really looks like it's behind this one. And that's what you're gonna do. Um, you're gonna do the same thing with this one. Make sure I've got my right, my, the right red I'm using my medium, medium red to go in and color. I'm going to get a little darker around the flowers because the flowers are, of course, above the strawberry. So you want to create the illusion that they're above it. So you're going to go in. Make it just a little bit darker. You want to press firmly because you want your color to look solid. You don't want it to look all uh, like a like a crayon. So there you go. If you wanted it to be a little bit more round looking, you go back in with your darker and put a little bit of more dark on the inside, or on the inside, on the edge, and then back behind the leaves, and maybe a little bit darker right here because we want it to look a little bit more rounded. I want this one to look a little bit more uh, ripe than the others, I think, because it's a little bigger. Okay. So that's how, quick, quick crash course on shading to give things some depth. All right. Now, as you can see when I, <laughs> sorry guys, got a little too close. The camera didn't want to focus. So right now the leaves are just with the dark outlining and the colored in of the light green or bright green, whichever you want to call it. Um, it already kind of gives it some depth but we're gonna work on it just a little bit more. And 
I'm going to take my medium green and then we're going to work on this leaf here and this leaf is back behind everybody else so it's going to have a whole lot more um, shading going on because I want it to look like it's behind this leaf, it's behind this leaf, and it's behind that leaf. Um, and then I'm going to do some work right in here to make this leaf look more behind this leaf. And right in here to make this leaf look more behind this leaf. And then again over here, which I kind of started right here because I wanted it to be behind my strawberry. So I went ahead when I was outlining this one, I went ahead and took my darkest and went around the strawberry there. But I'm going to do some more medium work over there. So I'm going to start back here on that first leaf in the back and I'm going to make it darker right behind everything. And then leaves are not flat by no means. So I'm going to put some shading over here around the edges so that it kind of will make the leaf look like it's folding a little bit. And I still want it to be the darkest along that uh, vein. So I'm going to come up along the vein and I'm going to bring the color out from the vein just a little bit. Kind of on both sides. Kind of work from the edges there. Okay, so now we've got a, a darker leaf, and I'm gonna, in a little bit, I'll probably go back in and do some black in through there, like I did on this particular strawberry down here to make that look even farther back from the others. <coughs> Sorry, guys. So now I'm going to work on this next leaf that's there in the back. I want it to look like it's behind this leaf that's folding over the strawberries. And I want it to look like it's behind this leaf that's going off to the side. So I'm going to take my darker color and I'm going to work up from where I want it to be in the back of. And then of course I'm going to go up that vein because I want my leaf to look like it's kind of flowing from that vein. Mm -hmm. Up the edge. We're at 40 minutes. Okay. So there's the start of the shading of the leaves but see how by shading right along behind here it really makes this leaf look like it's out in front of these two leaves I'm not going to do too much shading to this leaf because I want it to look like it's more in front of everybody um, I'll probably add like I said a little bit of black work 
and I'll probably add some, I'm going to add a little bit of dark along this back part and then along behind this strawberry on this leaf. Then this leaf is a little bit difficult because you you want it to look like it's a, a younger leaf with the with it folded like that. Um, but to make this part look like it's behind, like it's supposed to, you need to go in with the dark. So I'm gonna do that real quick. But I don't want to get too dark because it's a it's a young leaf. So I'm just gonna make it a little bit darker than the part of the leaf that's in front of the folded part. So there you go. Now it looks like it's folded and it doesn't look like just some random line. Okay, I'm gonna go do, this is where coloring your, your flower in comes into play because if I hadn't have, I would have already covered over that little uh, flower petal. I'm going to do the same thing over here on this leaf that I did on that little tiny leaf. And I'm going to put in a little bit darker back here because that part of the leaf is supposed to be further back than this part of the leaf. And always color up the spine because you want to give some depth to it. And then over here, I'm going to do the same. So I think what I'm going to do, guys, is tonight we'll end on the strawberries. Um, I think the next night maybe do the lemons or what do you think should I do lemons live so you guys can see how I color those or should I already have them um, colored so that we can get to the cutting and the decoupaging on the next video give me a give me an idea what you would like to see I'm gonna keep working a little bit while I give you guys a chance to respond to that question so here's my black I'm gonna go and outline some of these strawberry cap leaves to give them a little bit more definition because they get lost in the sea of green. And just by outlining them, that kind of helps to shade a little bit. Give them a little bit of depth. And then back behind the strawberry caps, I'm going to put some black in just to make that one leaf in the back look even more in the back. And you're just doing the black lightly. You don't want to overpower. You don't want, you don't want it to look black. You still want it to look green. But by giving it just that little bit more darkness, sends it more. This is where I put in the black. It sends it more even into the back. So now we've, we've differentiated between this leaf, this leaf, and this leaf, and this leaf. So this leaf looks like it's most, mostly in the front, which it should. Then this leaf is closer. And then this leaf is further away. And then there's this tiny little part on this leaf where it's like wrapped over on itself. So I'm just going to kind of color that in a little bit black. I'm going to do a little bit of black over here along this strawberry. Mm. In this Oh, Jenny, I missed that. <laughs> J 
Jenny's messaging me on my phone, but of course I'm recording on the phone and I didn't look up soon enough to see what she was saying. I'm gonna put a little bit of black on this strawberry underneath this leaf area to kind of give a bit of shadow, make that leaf stand out off of the strawberry a little, a little bit more. are saying lemons live okay awesome I'll wait and do the lemons on the next live um, would you guys like that a little bit sooner than Friday I wish I knew why My um, stuff doesn't show up very well. I don't know why it doesn't keep working for me. Okay, so this is this is almost finished for the strawberries. Um, I'm get the original. Let me turn this. Okay, so here is my original one. And then here is the one that I just did tonight. To kind of give you guys an idea. having some pre-done steps that way you guys can kind of see the strawberries all the way to the finish line mm -hmm. so that's part of it. remind people that yes you're using colored pencils yes I'm using colored pencils nothing fancy just colored pencils these are it's so hard to see because it's written in, in gold but that just says Crayola and then the name of the color Again, I, I got the, I've had uh, the Crayola 50 count for ever and a day um, because I love to color and I love to have lots of color so that I can do my shading and I'm not stuck with a flat picture when I'm done coloring. Um, it's the artist in me. If you just want a flat picture, more power to you know however you want to do it like i always say there is no wrong way to art and this is just a means to get yourself to relax and just forget about the stresses of the world when you sit down to do artwork you forget about the climate of the world you forget about the stress of bills you forget um, you forget that there's, you know, problems in the world. You can just, you just focus on this and everything else slips away. So, um, I'm, I'm getting told that there's only one person that said yes to sooner. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if, if, um, oh, there we go. Hey, I think I just found out where to get to all my comments. Okay. So, oh, and Jenny, you said something and I didn't look up. <laughs> 
but I have found my live comments so if you want to talk to me there that's cool too um, so it is almost the end of the hour I think we're getting to the point where we should make our announcement about who That'd be great if it could be done before Friday. Would that mean you would begin the decoupage on Friday? Yeah, if I, you know, I could do, um, I could do the lemons on like Wednesday. Wednesday about 8 o'clock at night. And then on Friday we could do the cutting and decoupaging. Um, that way it would be basically within a week that the project would be finished. Um, we, we could totally do it that way. That would be cool. Um, so yeah, we need to announce who wins. And uh, Jenny and I were discussing a few things right before I went on air as well. And we decided since 1,000 followers is such a huge milestone for us that we're going to do something that we haven't done before. We are going to actually pick two winners from tonight's show. So two of you will win. Um, we're going to let you pick a $20 item from our page and that will be what you get so you actually can pick what you win um that way it's a little bit more special for you it's not just something that we've pre pre-picked um that way you know if you're a person who likes native american items you could pick a native american item if you're a person that likes animals you could pick an animal item um if you're doing your bathroom in aquatics you could pick something from our aquatics album um but also since i have been raving about this particular soap that I use all the time. Um, I, I think I bring it up almost every single episode that we do. Our winners will also get a bar of lava soap. Now, um, in this day and age, I need to uh, do a disclaimer. Please read the ingredients on this soap. If you are allergic to any of the ingredients, do not use it on yourself, obviously. Give it away to somebody else who could use it. But this is the soap that I use when my hands get nasty um, with either um, my clear coat that I spray myself with <laughs> while I'm spraying my pieces, um, the paint that I get on my hands, um, anything. This, I have yet to find what, um, what this won't work on. So this is the lava soap, and I always say that I remember a commercial. Every time I'm using this, I remember this commercial back from probably the 80s, and I always say I'm not going to sing it, but I'll sing it tonight. The, the commercial used to go, a woman's hands don't get that dirty, nope, 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 don't need no lava soap, nope. And as they're singing that song, it's showing all these women with completely destroyed hands, working on a car, working in the garden, painting, you name it, they're showing it. And it shows a woman using the lava soap. So, our two winners will get a bar of lava soap and a $20 item that they get to pick from our photo albums. Um, and that way it's personalized to you. And let's see, Jenny, did you? Yes, Jenny has announced the winners in the thing. So please, please, please make sure you direct message Magical Mud Ceramics. Um, if you haven't messaged us before, we can't message you with the way Facebook is set up. Um, so please make sure you direct message Magical Mud Ceramics. Once you've picked out your piece, give us your address and, and all that so that we can get you your items. Um, please remember our items are made to order. So most times we don't have pieces just sitting around. Um, right now I do have some shelves down in the front room. Um, 
that would have our items from our festivals. Uh, if you're interested in seeing what's already made so that you don't have to wait for us to make us make it, you can uh, direct message us and I can take you um, on a tour of our shelves and let you know what's there so you can pick from the shelves if you want something a little bit quicker. Um, yeah, so congratulations to Mary Hescamp and Carolyn Grohl. You are our two winners. Um, thank you everyone for being here and I will come on on Wednesday and show you how I colored the lemons, which will be kind of the exact same way that the strawberries are done, but that way you can see what little bit of differences I do with the lemons. Um, and then on the Friday, we will do the cutting and decoupaging of the pieces. So congratulations, and make sure you direct message us for the winners. Or anybody that has a question, you're welcome to direct message us as well. Um, and I, I encourage people to direct message us. Um, that way we can contact you if you have questions, if you have concerns. We can just get a little bit more um, personal through the social media than if, um, if you just put a message on one of our posts because um, if you just message on our posts we can we can message you back on that post but then we can't really get that that personal touch isn't there as it could be with a direct message so okay everyone i will see you wednesday night about 8 p.m to do the lemons until then stay safe